so kindly introduced me. I have to say, when I was invited to this event, and it said Marquette Formal, I wasn't sure exactly what that meant, but now I understand. You all are the most beautiful group of viewers I've ever seen in your Marquette Formal attire. I also have to add that I'm here with my daughter, College. She's five, and on the way here, I, I tried to explain what this event was, and she said, yeah, because art is funner than boring stuff, right? <laughs> Nailed it. Good job, Mother. You got it. <laughs> when I think about art in Marquette, my heart just swells, and I know everyone in this room feels that same way. A lot of times art can be that intangible thing that's there, but when it's there, you feel brighter, you feel happier, and you feel more connected with those around you. But I know it can be difficult to describe, difficult to put your finger on at times, if you don't have the language to talk about it, and you don't have the knowledge of its true importance in the community. In the city of Marquette, I know that art plays a critical role in our city's character, placemaking, and vibrancy. I am incredibly grateful to the following groups for their contributions in this valiant effort. The staff at the Marquette Arts and Culture Center, including Tina and her staff, the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, we also have a Public Art Commission, all of the organizers and volunteers for this event, the 11 individuals and groups who are being recognized with important awards tonight, and our sponsors, Marquette Mountain and Make It Marquette, which is part of Marquette Smart Zone. All of these groups, the staff, the committee members, the volunteers, the award recipients, sponsors, and even folks here attending because they love art, your persistence to prioritize art in our community is noticed and recognized. Our city is a better place because of your dedication and your passion. The works you're doing to help us, they help us better appreciate the impact of art and have more opportunities to experience and talk about how it impacts us. Thank you for your continued efforts. You truly make Marquette a better place, and we're glad to have you here. I hope you have a lovely evening tonight, and I will turn it back over to Tina. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tina. So, thank you all for being here tonight. It's amazing, actually, to see so many people. So tonight, I have the honor of presenting the award for uh, special recognition to a man who, for over 40 years, has done incredible work on so many levels and has truly had a positive impact on the culture of this community. So Vic Holliday, a former associate professor and current adjunct instructor for NMU's Department of Theater and Dance, has created over 220 scenic designs, over 200 lighting designs, as technician director, electrician, carpenter, props master, painter, and stage manager. You could call him the Swiss Army Man, really. <laughs> Vic's experience and work with the Marquette Arts community has been one that I would say is a wonderful representation of what makes it, this community so unique. Something that he said to me was that this, this is an arts community that is accepting of new people and ideas, it's enthusiastic, it's supportive, and one where people can disagree with respect and understanding. But what they really told me was the highlight of his career was that it was a process of mutual learning with aspiring theater artists and with the students interested in theater and arts. It was basically a two-way street. So, overall, Vic has had a truly incredible career here in Marquette and beyond, creating scenic and lighting designs for the university, for the community at large and its local organizations, and professional theater in multiple states. We're talking Hawaii, North Carolina, and a few more. So for such an amazing career and the impact Vic has had, on so many people, I really could not think of a more deserving person to have this special recognition award. Thank you. I want to first thank Market Arts and Culture for recognizing me. This is an honor, one I certainly did not expect. <laughs> and I want to thank the Market Arts community. This the past 47 years or so, we all have been a joy to work with. It's a great place to do art, no matter what kind of art you're doing. Somebody will like it, somebody will get excited by it, somebody might not like it. 
but they respect what you're doing. And I have to thank a few people for getting me where I am today. Traditional thank you, thank you, thank you for accepting speech. First of all, my parents, who had no idea what to do with a family member who wanted to go to the arts, I was the only one, but they were incredibly supportive of it. Teachers in grade school and high school who exposed us a little bit to theater, told us that it was there, what it was. Dr. Jim Report, everybody's daddy bear, who hired me at Northern back in 1982. Wonderful colleagues over the years. And especially all the students I've worked with. 37, no, 39 years now in New Jersey. 39 years worth of students who don't let you get replaced, who make you keep learning along with them, who keep throwing new things at you that you can either accept or you may be uncomfortable by, but they give you ideas, they challenge you. And I think that's probably the best part of my career at Northern was working with the students. They're wonderful kids. And I do have to thank the university as well. They let me do what I love doing for 37 years. And they paid me for it. <laughs> what more can one ask? Thank you. She also would visit her uncle on the grandfather's dairy farm. Her uncle always had a poetry book in the back pocket. And he would have Janine recite poetry to the cows while he milked them. <laughs> he told her the cows gave better milk when she read to them. Her love for poetry remained when, with her through college as she earned a major in English and minor in teaching. But at that time, teaching wasn't offering very many jobs. So she chose a career in computer programming. That experience proved to be helpful. Janine set up the web platform for the Pandemic Literary Project last year for hospital workers in the area. Even though she took a different path with her career, her love for poetry still burned strong. Once she and her husband retired to the UP, she immersed herself in our vibrant artistic community. Her work has been published in many publications, and she's authored several books. Her chapbook, Objects May Appear Closer, won the 2015 Celery City Chapbook Contest. And she has been twice nominated for a Pushcart Prize, and also nominated for a Best of the Net Award. Janine is quite humble and seems to want to give all the credit to everyone else, but well-deserved is the comment everyone is using to describe their sentiments on Janine winning this award. From the sidewalk poetry contest for area youth to the local pandemic literacy project, Janine has shared much of her talent and love of poetry with our community. And for that, we are very grateful. It's my pleasure to present the award for Writer of the Year to Janine Peregrine Grass. All right, so I um, was asked to write a poem for tonight. So I'm going to read my poem first and then do my thank yous because if I do my thank yous first, I'm going to cry. <laughs> so, in gratitude. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. You are all poets. Your images glimmer in superior sunrises, or gates caught on morning walks. 
They shine in photos of bees and paintings of streams. You fold lyrics into tossed pots and paper cranes. I see lines you scrawl with skates along a frozen bay, murals on a sidewalk, or toes over hardwood as you teach a child to elevate. I hear your ballads, Shakespeare at the Ordock, concerts in the park, your verses at last unmasked in Sunday choirs or Third Street serenades. And when I was broken through all your cards and calls, it was your poetry that mended me. So, thank you. That last reference is, um, I broke my back um, in January, and my poets and this community truly mended me. So I'd like to thank the City of Marquette Arts and Culture Center for this amazing award, and thank my fellow poets for their inspiration and their support. But most of all, I'd like to thank my partner, Rich Gras. <laughs> Without his support and tender love, I would not be here today. So thank you very much.
Volunteers do not necessarily have the time, they just have the heart. I didn't say that quote, I Googled that quote, but it, I think it really rings especially true for our next winner for the Arts Volunteer, which is Andrew Lacombe. You might see him, he's a tall drink of water over there, you can't miss him. You've probably seen him on TV6, but he's also the news director, I don't know if you know that. Pretty big deal. No biggie. He served on a multitude of community boards, so maybe you've seen him at the Children's Museum, or perhaps the Marquette Symphony Orchestra in the cello section. Also the former president, by the way. Or was it maybe you've seen him running at the last Marquette Marathon? Because he was there too. He just somehow does it all. I should um, mention that I follow Andrew on Instagram, and I'm not sure how he's also able to have the social life that he has on top of all of the stuff that he does, but it's it's pretty impressive. I used to have a theory that Andrew, there was at least 13 Andrew Lacombe's in the community. I'd be like, oh, that must be Andrew Lacombe number seven, because that's the cellist. He's also my favorite, number seven. We'll see him a little later on today as he performs for us. What else have I got here? He's a Marquette native. He dipped out for a little bit, but luckily for us, he came back, because he knew there were countless opportunities to keep music a major part of his life here without it being his life. And he's been instrumental in bringing the Marquette Symphony Orchestra to the strong artistic and financial position that it is in today, even through a pandemic, as we enter in our 25th season. I'm very lucky that he's my vice president, and I'm very lucky that he was my president before that. Andrew was also honored in high school as the Marquette County Youth Volunteer of the Year for his work with 818 Media and the UP Children's Museum. He is also being honored this year as the TV Young Professional of the Year for the Michigan Association of Broadcasters, which is a pretty big deal. I was able to yak at Nina Itner, who was not able to be here, the Executive Director of the Children's Museum, a little bit about Andrew, and she really encapsulated what it's like to have the honor to work with and call Andrew a friend. He says yes, and he means it. Her quote was, He's one of my guys. You can hear her voice as I say this quote, so just try to channel it. He's one of my guys, a person I can always count on. So we're very lucky to have Andrew in our community, and I'm very lucky to know him too. Everybody give it up for Andrew. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, to Jamie for that wonderful introduction and uh, uh, this, this whole day making me just uh, want to do more and, and keep giving back because uh, I moved back to Marquette so I could do everything and uh, I get to run, I get to have an awesome job at TV6 and then do everything I can in the arts community and teach private cello lessons and, and try to just find uh, new places to perform and, and new ways to, uh, to, to get more people uh, out and, and hear the talented musicians that we have in Marquette. So. Uh, I'm lucky to, uh, you know, I grew up here and I was very fortunate to play with the symphony, uh, you know, in the early days. And uh, so now I feel it's, it's, you know, I've got to, you know, keep giving back and, and keep uh, keep the symphony going strong. And we've had some great leaders uh, before who I've learned a ton from. Some of them here tonight, Dan Arnold, Steve Brugan. Uh, so it's, it's awesome to uh, to keep, keep the tradition going and have the symphony now at 25 years, our 25th season. Excited to have uh, as normal of a season as we can, getting back into Kaufman on October 9th. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be great to uh, to continue. But I'm very proud of all the symphony has done through uh, the pandemic, and and I think we've reached so many people with our music, and uh, it's such an important time. So I'm very proud of that. So thank you, Tina and Mark Harrison Culture Center staff for putting this on, and and thank you to everyone uh, for. Uh, supporting the symphony and supporting all the, the wonderful art that's happening in Marquette because it, it I never hesitate to say yes because I know it's, it's worth it. So, thanks. Uh, I'd like to introduce our next recipient, which is for the Arts Advocate Award. Said another way, this award is given to a person who has demonstrated significant accomplishments in advancing and supporting arts in Marquette and making things happen. That individual is Marty Abbott. In getting to know Marty, what strikes me the most and what was highlighted in the nomination process was the sheer breadth of his involvement with the arts and the local creative community. Marty has a prolific background in theater, music, and of course, writing. 
He has been a contingent professor of English at Northern for over 25 years and has won numerous awards for both his teaching and writing. Marty served two consecutive terms as the UP Poet Laureate. That recognition in itself is commendable, but Marty took to heart using this platform as a way to make poetry more accessible to folks all across the UP. In Marty's words, art that isn't accessible isn't really doing its job. As part of the Marquette Poet Circle, Marty has participated in and organized readings art exhibits, and fundraisers for local causes, including the Warming Center and Room at the Inn. Marty served on the board of the Peninsula Arts Appreciation Council for over 15 years, where he directed and performed in plays and musicals, and also conducted youth and adult writing workshops. In addition, he is a musician and singer, directing choirs, playing keyboard and pipe organ for several area churches, and being a member of local praise bands. In October 2020, Marty took on the role of Adult Programming Coordinator for the Peter White Public Library. In a challenging year, Marty saw opportunity to broaden and advance the reach of arts through virtual capabilities. The virtual Christmas Carol production, for example, had viewers tuned in from all over the country. He set ambitious goals in his new role, for example, inviting the two-time U.S. Poet Laureate Natasha Trethewey to read at the library. That was a pie in the sky, and gosh, if he didn't get it done within a few months on the job. So I'll close on this. When I asked Marty how he would describe himself, he called himself a collaborator. Marty works with all different types of artists and artsy people and seeks to, seems to derive his greatest passion from creating something new, from creating something exciting, and being able to share it with others. Please join me in congratulating Marty, a true advocate of arts in our community. Thank you, Kristen, for that uh, really kind introduction. And thank you to the Market Arts and Culture Center and uh, Tina and Tristan and Amelia for all you do for this arts community and for the um, Market Arts community itself. Um, it really humbles me to be in this room filled with stunning artists, writers, poets, singers, musicians, performers, technical wizards, and arts advocates many of whom I'm privileged to call friends. And we have my family here tonight. Well, most of them, my daughter was on a trampoline and rolled her ankle to get out of this. I don't understand that. <laughs> but um, um, I, I, I really appreciate having my family here um, to put up, who have to put up with all my craziness every day of the year or so. <laughs> That's my son. Um, I've been thinking a lot about grace since I found out I'd be receiving this recognition. I don't think of grace as some kind of ethereal force that descends out of the clouds. Grace is an active force, full of the creative energy that has brought us together tonight. Grace is painting, music, sculpture, movement, and words. It is something that has kept us connected through these last 18 or 19 months reminded us that we are not alone, even in the darkest of times. Watching yesterday's ceremonies in commemoration of the 20th anniversary of 9-11, I was reminded again of the power of grace through art to bring healing into troubled times. This Arts Advocate Award really belongs to those artists who on a daily basis transform not just our community, but our state, country, and world. Tonight, I am surrounded by uh, so many of the creatives who have inspired me and helped me over the years. Um, my friend Janine, who just won uh, Writer of the Year so deservedly, and um, all of my fellow poets from the Marquette Poet Circle. You, ha you haven't seen the end of poets tonight, I'm just warning you. Um, um, but I also want to um, dedicate this award to my friend Helen, Helen is the epitome of an arts cheerleader. She is. She inspires me and has been a part of my work as poet laureate 
and as part of the Peter White Public Library since the start. And um, she is here in spirit with us tonight, even though she cannot be with us right now. Um, and she is, uh, she is um, in Green Bay right now, undergoing some treatments that she needs. Um, but um, I do dedicate this award to Helen. And um, in conclusion, I would like to offer you this poem to all of my fellow creatives, all you artists out there who are so wonderful. And it's called Grazia Plena, Full of Grace. September 11, 2021. I imagine Van Gogh was, as he stood in that field in Arliss, paintbrush in his hand, or Gershwin at his piano while cobalt spilled from his fingertips. And think of Emily in her room, stitching her words together as she hummed Amazing Grace. On this day, 20 years later, after listening to 2,983 names spoken, violins, bells, silences, it hangs in the air like tinseled firefly light. This is what I know about grace. It's in that roll call on this blue September morning, each syllable blessed and blessing from Amoth to Zuckelman, winged on their way by music, poem, charcoal rubbed across paper until letters float to its surface like a face emerging from a, on a Polaroid. This is grace, what we do each day to lift each other up, help each other remember, be remembered, painter, piano player, poet, mother, father, son, daughter, all sunflowers, all rhapsodies, all angels in the early morning, stooping, plucking, smiling, flying. Thank you all for this award.
It is my honor today to open this and I'm here to present the award for Outstanding Performance Artist to Dan Truckee. Dan is an integral part of our art and also our, our history of this community. He's the director and curator of the NMU Bomier UP Heritage Center. He's been instrumental in bringing many, many international as well as local musical acts to our community stages. He's a multi-instrumentalist, a very talented singer-songwriter with a bunch of, uh, a lot of solo albums, I think six? Yeah, yeah six-ish. Uh, he has uh, those original albums to his credit. He performs both solo and with bands such as the Celtic Trio, The Knockabout. Dan is also the coordinator of Rockestra. Tell me you've been to a Rockestra performance in this town. Uh, Rockestra did the seemingly impossible task of corralling many of our community's great musicians, including high school band, orchestra, and chorus members, and focusing them into big, successful, hugely entertaining fundraising concerts. Dan regards orchestra as, sorry, Dan regards Rockestra as one of his career's proudest, mo rom proudest moments, and rightly so. It takes a special gift and a lot of work to bring out the best in our arts community, guide them into greatness, and give back to the next generation of musicians. When asked what drives him to create, Dan says that for him, it's a compulsion. He just has to react, has to write and create music. And it's also about, and I think this is important, creating a body of work that he's proud of and that others can enjoy. Please, if you haven't yet, Check out Dan's great albums. You can find them online at bandcamp.com. His latest is called The Incurable Romantic, a fitting title for our outstanding performance artist, Dan Truckee. Wow, thanks, Jeff. Thanks for saying all that stuff. Um, thanks to the Marquette Arts and Culture Center and Tina and everybody there. Uh, I want to thank Susan Devine and others who nominated me for this award uh, from Hiawatha. They're such a great organization. And just to think that they would think I would be deserving of this is just wonderful. Um, I, I, looking around the room and all the people, there's like over a couple dozen people I could thank individually here. But I think that's part of the point is that an artist is never just an island in a community like this. We are raised up by other artists. The Rockestra, he mentioned, is part of that. There's a bunch of people here who've been involved in that. And it's totally volunteer people to give their time to create something big, a splash, if you will, and raise some money. And it's just a gas. And we hope to get to do another one next year sometime. I, want, I also want to thank uh, my wife and my daughter who are here tonight. Uh, my son couldn't make it, but they've just been my muse and my sounding board and the shoulder to cry on at times when I felt like nobody cared. Um, it's every artist at some point in time who's like, nobody cares. Um, and they, they've always inspired me and have been there. But my family as well, my brother Paul is here representing my whole family who you saw out there a little bit, who are all singers and performers in their own way. And uh, those family trips in the station way where we would sing songs and make up songs uh, and you know have fake bands in the basement for, pretending that we were the Beatles or Aerosmith, whoever it was that week, you know. That all inspired me to want to do what I do. And my parents were such great supporters of the arts and, and music and they were singers and they encouraged us to do it as well and I wish they were here today. And my cousin Janie is here, and I, I want to mention Janie because her grandmother, who was her aunt, was such a great lover of music. Siri Girtho from Nagani. And she played piano wonderfully and sang to us in Finnish and other languages, and, and she inspired us so much. And, uh, and that, that, that's why I do what I do, is because it came from deep within me. Uh, it's not just a compulsion, it's just what I do. It was 33 years ago, a very scared young man got up with a guitar in the back room of Whiskers on Crest Island and said, I'm going to sing my own songs to people. 
and I invited a bunch of friends who came and drank and listened to me warble and be terrible so that I could, you know, maybe someday be up here playing to you today. And 33 years later, I still get a gas out of it just as much as I did on that day. So thank you for this award and for being here and supporting the arts. Thank you so much. Well, I'm very excited to be presenting the award of Outstanding Visual Artist to Mark Himes. When you enter Mark's home, you're struck with the beauty and the view of Teal Lake, several amazing pieces of artwork made by members of his family, the local art community, and Mark's pieces as well. Looking into the kitchen, you notice a series of ceramic vessels above the cabinets. This is where it started for Mark. His earliest memory of creating artwork was during a ceramics course he took at the YMCA as a teenager. Mark was surrounded by artists while growing up. His mother and father were both artists. Many members of his family were and still are artists. Mark enjoys the mystery people experience when viewing his pieces. They often guess at the materials. With his ultra-smooth, glossy, colorful finishes, viewers often mistake his painted wood turnings for glazed ceramics. In the 90s, Mark's father introduced him to wood turning. Mark inherited his father's tools in 99 and uses them to create his wood turnings in his shop just off the kitchen. Mark had a long career as a doctor. He started wood turning in his free time, and after his retirement in 2013, he began to focus more on his wood turnings. Just one month after his retirement, he installed his pieces at Zero Degrees Gallery, which he has been a member of since then. With a passion for wood turning, Mark and others started the Superior Land Wood Turners Group. This group has been formative in his work as an artist. Mark has also given a lot to the community as director of the group. For Mark, being creative in this place is invigorating. He gets a deep sense of satisfaction from his process and appreciators of his work. He has the support of his creative and talented wife, Renee, who gives advice and feedback on his color choices. The airbrush colors Mark uses on his pieces are a defining characteristic of his work. Mark has been the recipient of several awards from Art on the Rocks, the Boniface Art Center, the DeVos Art Museum, and the Superior Artist Lake Superior Art Association, to name a few. Mark is being presented this award given to an individual artist who's had a consistent impact and contribution upon the arts and culture in Marquette. I'd like to call to the stage Mark Hines. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the Marquette Arts and Culture Center uh, for the award. And thank you for all the support that uh, the entire arts community has given me in my work. Um, it's been uh, uh, really a delight uh, to be involved with so many artistic and creative people. And it's such an honor to be out here among all these wonderful artists that have received these awards for doing so much for their community. Uh, wood turning has been a passion for me. My father did introduce me to it. Uh, and I still use some of those tools and think of them while I'm working with them. And uh, it's just uh, been always uh, wonderful to work with wood as a medium to find the beauty in the wood uh, and then to add color and texture because they are, are so rewarding to me and uh, I just do get a lot of satisfaction from it and a lot of uh, a lot of my advice comes from my wife and me uh, what's up with my wood shadings and in the house and, and also it's very supportive. Uh, and also uh, my family uh, of course my father my other family uh, has supported me from this illness and also members of the community in our wood training uh, chapter of the American Association of Wood Trainers. Norm Hefke has been extremely involved in that, as well as in the Zero Degrees Gathering. Uh, and there's many of them that inspire me and want me to do uh, uh, even more, more work than, than I've done before. And it's, uh, it's a great honor to receive this award. I was just really flabbergasted because there's so many wonderful visual artists here. Uh, but keep on creating creativity uh, you know, that we, we feel and we express in our work is you know, something that kind of gives us life but you know, it helps us go. I've seen people that have, that have started uh, wood turning lots of times like an older guy who 
We did some winter in high school and looking around at the retired for something to do. What can you do? And when he finds an artistic endeavor that gives him passion and gives him a reason to, to strive and to do something and to create. And it's life changing. So it's a, it's one of them. I encourage all of you to keep on creating and you know, for your appreciation of the arts. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much. Bigfoot gives thanks. He doesn't chase down a turkey, wring its pink neck like a wet dish rag, gut it with his thumb, cook it in sun, and fly in May. Serve it with sides of chewed yam, moose marrow, fermented pumpkin guts green with time, smelling strong as a bear den at winter's end. He doesn't smooth his hair with mud, brush his teeth with fresh milkweed, cram himself into a church pew beside blue-haired widows who look at his gorilla arms and long to feel their dead husbands' dark embraces in bed at night again. Doesn't stand when the organ starts breathing music, raise the siren of his voice to, now thank we all our God, until the stained glass rattles and fractures, letting seams of pure white stitch all gathered with the shook foil of the world. No, his way is simpler, a morning glory leaning toward day, unfolding, shaking off the teary dew of darkness. Stand outside at dawn or dusk. The bent world is charged with his hairy gratitude. In the long-legged shadows of first and last light, as they stretch and stretch and stretch down the street, across railroad trestle, through hay fields, corn fields, into pines and poplar, further and further and further, mountain, swamp, and lake, canyon, and cave, ocean, glacier, savanna, desert, until at last they have touched it all, all the grandeur of deep down things. So it's my pleasure and privilege to present this award to Lynn Belitho. Now we've all come from somewhere, but Lynn has been all over the country before she got here. This award is given to a person who provides extraordinary leadership and creativity in advancing the cause of art education in Marquette. We all know that the arts are essential to the vibrancy and quality of life in this community. And my contribution is just to tell a little bit of her unique story and her impact on our community. So I got to know Lynn through a phone interview that we did. We met tonight for the first time. Um, she started life out in California when she was about five. She got hooked on ballet and it's all she's wanted to do. She said nothing ever changed. She was hooked for life. Um, family was with the Air Force and from there was to Oklahoma. There was this tremendous opportunity when she was 13 years old to go to London to study with a company there, but it wasn't allowed by her parents, so they transferred to Oklahoma. And after Oklahoma, to Louisiana, and she told me that in Louisiana it was about 105 degrees, but in Marquette it was 55 degrees when they moved here. 
So just this idea that we're all from somewhere, and she came here in the early 60s. When I was talking to her on the phone about what was Marquette like in the early 1960s, everybody tried to remember that was before Shopco. <laughs> that was before the Marquette Mall. She said the town ended right, right where Shopco is. And, and there was the Northwoods, but that was basically it. That was before Marquette Mountain was here. But she came here and, and she started teaching people to dance. Ballet was her love. Um, she was recruited by Harvey Wallace and different faculty and families at Northern Michigan University to teach dance classes. Um, she was multitasking before multitasking was cool um, for 40 years, um, or actually 37 years. Let me check my notes. She actually taught business classes at Ishmael High School and then came and taught dance. And she always danced with her students, which I think is great. I don't know that much about ballet, but I learned a lot from her in our conversation over the phone. It's been her passion since she was a little girl, she said. It's challenging, it's so beautiful, it brings back so much joy. And dancing with her students was such a big part of her life. Um, I really feel like she's a Renaissance woman. Lynn, I don't know you well, but reading your story and hearing your story, you've had a lot of adventures and thousands and thousands of students. She, um, she wrote seven original full-length ballets for their recitals over the years. So an incredibly talented, creative, and a, just a, a treasure to our community. It's my pleasure to recognize Linda Lethal. When Tina called and said that I had been selected as Art Educator of the Year, I was astonished. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would receive a recognition like this. She also said that we should discuss what we think of our biggest contribution. Well, some of my contribution is sitting in the audience. There's some current students, former students, and their parents. And I think that was my contribution to the arts, is the teaching of thousands of children ballet over the past 40 plus years. At one time, I used to teach seven days a week, plus teaching high school. So I had lots of energy, and it was lots of fun. As I look back at my life, that has certainly been the highlight for me getting to pass on my knowledge, talent, and love of ballet, and getting to know my students and their parents has been a privilege. I've had many girls that started with me when they were three years old and danced until they graduated from high school, and a few even from college. Not only did I see their ballet talents develop, I saw them develop into fine young women. I still cherish being in touch with some of the students that I had many, many years ago. Obviously, I'm extremely proud of the many students who have continued as dance professionals, either their dancing or their teaching. It's exciting when your students share your passion and follow in your footsteps. But the other students are just as important and have accomplished much. Like most teachers and coaches, the majority of our students do not go on to be professionals. It's what they've gained while they've been in their classes through the years. I had one parent tell me, my daughter is tall and will never be a dancer, but she learned so much confidence and poise while she's been taking ballet, plus having fun with our, all her friends. I see that kind of development in students all the time. Through the opportunities in our ballet classes, they develop life skills, such as the ability to organize their time, to work together, to compromise, and to reach a common goal. <clears throat> it's always fun to see these little three-year-olds that come in. Their toes are turned in, their <laughs> arms are bent, and they're looking around to see what everybody else is doing. And years later, when they're teenagers, they are beautiful, accomplished dancers. 
Ballet has been my passion since I was a little girl. My teachers passed that on to me and their skill, and I just hope that I've been able to pass that on to the many students that I've had and to be a positive influence in their lives. I'm obviously in the sunset years of my career. This award is a recognition I never expected to receive, and I am totally grateful. Thank you very much. Well, Tina is absolutely right. Um, I actually believe that all technology comes down to art and culture. And you'll see any project that's ever been done in a high-tech space, you'll see that that came from an artist. And art, art and culture drives technology at all times. I truly believe that. And that's why I want to be so involved in this organization and art and culture in my cafe moving forward. You see a lot. You see my face there a lot. So uh, what a wonderful event uh, to see Marquette office of arts and culture and partners that prepared for us this evening in 24 years, it's amazing. Um, and on behalf of Innovate Marquette and Make It Marquette, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Art and Business Board recipient. But before I do, I would like to discuss who I feel exemplifies a, re a recipient of this award. In ancient times, to be noble meant many things. Loyalty, servant leadership, kindness, humility, purity, honesty, self-discipline, excellence, integrity, and perseverance. Many nobles of the time wore distinctive clothing and crests to define their heritage, lands, region, and clans. In Scotland, tartans were clothes consisting of crisscross patterns to what we would normally find today, like plaid. When you saw a seal of these patterns, watch out, because a noble had, had roused the clan against against repression or to protect their homeland. In modern times, these nobles are cl or clans are not as clearly defined, but just as notable. One that comes to mind in business and innovation is Sir Richard Branson, a virgin. Man, wouldn't I want to have a beer with that guy? A true leader and gentleman who is known to never just sit around and talk, but stand up get out there and take action, always moving ahead no matter what obstacle is in his way. Now the recipient of tonight's award may not have sunk our 906 nation plaid flag on the moon or Mars yet, but I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> A fine human who also is very well known for the phrase, screw it, let's do it. <laughs> it gives me great honor to present this award for our own UP Richard Branson. I tip my head, my plaid Stormy Cromer to you, sir. Mr. Bugsy Sailor and his clan at UP Supply Co. Thank you. Um, that was an incredible introduction um, to this small little team of ours at UP Supply Co. and um, a few other faces in those photos that have been. Um, with us at UP Supply Co. over the years. Um, very grateful to be part of this um, community which lifts the arts up um, so much. Um, I just have a few bu bullet points of my experience here, and I moved back to Marquette in 2014, and in that first week I had a lunch with a beloved community member, and I told her I want no small role in this community. And the shop downtown next to Baby Cakes has been open for four years now. Um, certainly in the last year and a half, we've had no shortage of hurdles, um, but a lot of celebrations. And I kind of think of it as the little shop that could. The basis for that um, comes out of people who are willing to say yes, and a community that's willing to say yes. Um, in Joe's introduction, he talked a lot about plaid, and it's fitting I've got a bullet point about here, Platter Day, the annual, the worldwide celebration of plaid, coming on October 1st. Um, it's been over 10 years in the making, and early on, uh, one of the first years, I sent a blind email to Stormy Cromer when I didn't know anybody there, and I said, hey, 
I'm creating this holiday about plaid. Would you like to participate? And it was Gina Jackworth Thorson, the president of Stormy Cromer, who responded herself personally and said, yes, we would love to participate. Wow. And that's the attitude I've seen since I've been back. Um, another fantastic example is when we did a fundraiser for the Copper Country floods um, several years back now. And we were fortunate to raise $40,000 um, for the QAnon community. Um, that started with my business partner, Paul, who said, hey, Bugsy, how about we donate 100% of the proceeds that was, me being, that was me saying yes, who reached out to her friend Mike, can you contribute a design? He said yes. A print shop contributed their labor, and it was just more and more people saying yes. And this has absolutely been the story with Fresh Coast Film Festival um, in the last handful of years. Um, Aaron Peterson came to me, and I felt a duty to say yes, I want to be involved and start this film festival. And between sponsors, venues, volunteers, um, several people in this room, um, it was everybody saying yes that made that happen. So um, even though I say yes too often and overwhelm myself, um, committing to more than I can take on, um, it's an honor to be part of this community and a, and a community that's so willing to participate in new ideas. Um, Three takeaways I would like to bestow upon you in, in my time of these creative endeavors. Um, anything I've ever done, whether it be stone skipping, plaid, sunrises, the Upper Peninsula, all I've ever wanted to do is take a single little topic and bring it as far as I possibly can. Um, and within some of those, I feel like I'm still just scratching the surface. So take your thing, see how far you can take it. I think there's intrinsic value in putting your ideas into the world. Um, there, there will be opportunities, even if you don't achieve the goal of the idea, there will be opportunities that exist just by facing those vulnerabilities of putting it into the world. And third, um, a very dear friend of mine um, taught me about not waiting for permission. Um, and that comes in various forms. I think growing up, I always sought permission to what well, we all do as children, seeking permission for, from our parents. And in the arts, we often wait for permission to, or um, to get a grant, um, permission from our peers to, to work on an idea. And, you know, in the words of Richard Branson, screw it, let's do it. Um, stop waiting for permission. Um, so thank you, um, thank you to everybody that's stopped at the store, thank you to my wonderful staff, um, and no matter what the future holds, I hope you remember that the sun still rises. Thank you. I would like to first say thank you to Tina and the staff for what a great job they've done. Thank you. You challenge me every time we have a meeting to think about something and to think about art and to think about creation and to think about creativity. So this whole thing is to honor everybody that is creative, including a sound man, Jim Sapanic and Sombrero Sound. That's the place to be. <clears throat> An accident led you here. You went to see another frozen lake to walk among ice volcanoes, listen to the flows um, and crack. You did not know Superior awaited. Departed, battering in song against black rocks. You have been pulled in like trout from the off train or the chocolate, drawn to deep waters. Your breath sinks with the sound of the surf. Lake Scrub from Imprinting by Janine. Thank you. I am here to present the award for Outstanding 
arts organization. And I have to tell you that when I first began looking at this, I knew that there was an organization. I knew that they were very involved in the community. So the requirements to receive this award are that this organization must support the arts and artists. They have to be essential to the vibrancy and the life of the community. And they have to be benevolent in the community. This organization hits the trifecta of this. All the way around, they do incredible things. They have multimedia presentations where they bring together visual art, music, and the spoken arts. Go on to the website, look at their virtual tours, go to one of the performances where you see and you hear and you can smell yellow. You can hear the color. It's mind blowing. And it's awesome. And they do this all as an organization without a board of directors. They do not have an executive committee. They do not have bylaws. They are self proclaimed bohemian beatniks of language. <laughs> this is an awesome group. They have monthly meetings where people from womb to tomb can come and learn poetry and learn language and learn how this, this verbal expression of poetry that is, that is so integral to our lives. Janine told me that poetry is our introduction to language. This was really fascinating for me because my introduction in poetry was about two little German kids getting cooked in an oven by a witch. <laughs> this is not a pretty picture that I want to keep in, in, in my brain in poetry. The other came from Baptist hymnals, where there are pretty dastardly things happening to people in hopes of achieving something. So this group, this group is incredible with the level of talent that they have. I would be here until midnight if I were to go into all the accolades, all the awards, all the publications, everything that all of these people have done. And what is so exciting for me to present this tonight is that it's just not one person that's going to come up on stage. <laughs> it's the whole damn group <laughs> that's going to be here. So it is my great pleasure, and I am going to read off names. I'm going to get involved with this group somehow, as I have told my wife that I am working very diligently at reducing all of my volunteer hours so that we can spend more time together. <laughs> so I do want to get involved with this group. You guys are awesome. So it is my pleasure to present the Outstanding Arts Organization Award to the Marquette Poets Circle. And please, y'all, I start coming up. I'm just going to read the names. And if somebody help some of the folks come up here. Esther Ayers, Lisa Fosmo, uh, John and Miriam Taylor, Marty Ackitts, Beverly uh, Mathero, Janine and Rick Roswell. And oh, by the way, I thought this would be really great. I'm going to open this up with a poem. So how many poems have you heard tonight? <laughs> but. Marquette Poets Circle. Center for this award 
and for challenging us to make, take poetry to new places. Thank you to Peter White Public Library, especially to Marty Ackett for championing poetry. And thank you to our publishers, the Marquette Monthly, and especially Richard Rastel. Finally, thank you to this amazing group of poets for never saying no. You can see our work currently at the gallery in Travel Marquette and in October at the library. They're all on the spot, so stump the poet. Okay. Hello. Okay, um, so what we're going to ask, and I, I think we'll exclude the poets from giving us suggestions so that it doesn't look like it's fixed. Um, <laughs> but uh, for some of the poet, what we did during Art Week is we, Jeannie and I sat at a table, and we invited people to come up and ask us to give us a topic, and in 10 minutes we would give them a new poem, okay? And um, it started out a little slow, but by the end of the time, we had written, what? 21 poems in about two hours time. Oh, wow. So it was a lot. Um, so anyway, what we need is we need a topic, someone to shout out a topic that you want us to write on. We'll go with Janine first. What do you want Janine to write about? Yeah. Hurricanes. Hurricanes. You got, what did you Somebody here had one picture. What, what was that? Bugles. Like, Bugles. 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 The chip. Oh, the chip. Bugles. I like you. I really like you. Okay. I think I'm taking bugles. You got hurricanes. Okay. Okay. So I guess we're going to go away and um, we'll come back after um, the next uh, the, the next musical. Yeah. And, and whoever is coming up next, take your time. <laughs> Play a lot. Yeah, a long time, please. <laughs> that song seemed really short. <laughs> Marty, I got it's hurricane. Oh, no, first. no, no, I got, I got bugles. Oh, bugles. But Janine did hurricane, so why don't you go? Oh, so I get there to There you go, you get to go first. Okay. Yeah. All right. They start out small, just a little spin of wind that lifts the tip of waves. But it must feel good, that twist and lift, that rush and roar, that need to pull water and sky, blend and boil. They give in to the rush and roar. We name them and watch them grow. They're like our hurricane children, twisting, curving, curling every day, rolling always away from us. Thank you. I should have gone first and let you go. <laughs> wow, okay. So here we go, bugles. On our fingers, they offer protection. Corn talons to ward off all who will break our hearts. We place them over our fingernails, become invincible, a force as strong as hurricane or tidal wave. But really, from what do we protect ourselves? Sadness? Sickness? If only, if only the whole world could be armored with them, what would happen? Perhaps hunger would vanish from this planet. A bugle peace accord would be signed, every nation signing on. No more famine, just bugle world peace. <laughs> well, first of all, Michael Reed beat me to it. But our, one of the, the hidden things in our arts community is Mr. Jim Sapanich. So thank you, Jim, for having you can be with us. And to be able to come up here and hear myself so wonderfully wow. Well. It's so wonderful. So this next song is a new song that I've written, of course. I wanted to do something new. This one goes out to my brother, because he's gonna get it. So I yeah, I don't I'm not gonna give you the introduction because it basically tells itself, so here we go.
But I'm driving on them 28 again In the western hills of upper Michigan Each town I can recite by memory Each one has some meanings in me From you and the Trout Creek Matchwood to Birdland and where to have stood. I've driven through them all a hundred times and then glory in the back of my mind. From Covington to Wakefield again, we started out as boys and became men. Sometimes work and sometimes just for fun. To the rising or the setting of the sun. Here once stood a massive pottery that rebuilt Chicago with all its pottery. And a hundred other towns will never know. All cut down and hauled away in the snow. On the cutover grew a stubborn breed. Planting soil hostile to just about any sea. These towns are built on not such little ground. Some are standing, some no longer around. From Covington to Wakefield again. We started out as boys, we came in. Sometimes we work and sometimes just for fun. Until the rising and the setting of the sun. Down the hill into Wakefield I do fly For underground the men did work and die They dug up millions of tons of dirt and ore The red dust still lingers from the days of yore But it's quiet now when those glory days are gone The soul the old timers see to the young just another broken town on M28. Is there a future? Is it all too late? From Covington to Wakefield again. Each town thinks of days way back when. There was plenty of work and lots of fun. Is this the rising or the setting of the sun? Go oh, from Covington to Wakefield again. We started out as boys and became men. Sometimes we're working, sometimes just for fun. From the rising to the setting of the sun. My name is Patrick Booth. I am the sound side of things here at Shape and Sound Arts. And um, we've been asked to give out what we think is the most important award of the evening, which is the Youth Art Award. The youth are the most important part of our creative and artistic communities, and they are our future. Without the arts and without youth, we won't have poet laureates. Without the youth, we won't have ballet dancers. Without the youth, we will not have um, the UP Supply Company. Okay, we will not have sunrises without the youth. It's not a dick, but to know that. Um, but the youth are, they are what they are leading us forward. 
Uh, so it is beyond imperative that we do what we can to support them early on so that they have the space to learn, grow, and spread their wings. Part of the way we create that support is by celebrating their achievements so that they keep at it. Tonight, we are celebrating one great young artist that, I, that we are beyond excited to have in our community, Matthew Riley. Matthew is funny, unique, and driven. He attends Father Marquette, where he takes art classes with Brianna Hawkins, and learns lots of new ideas to carry over into his work. On one particular day, their class was visited by UP comic artist Brad Belly. Pronouncing that right? Oh, I'm sorry. He's great. Uh, this experience has led Matthew to create all kinds of comics of his own, including longer ongoing stories, such as one about a character called the Flying Ace, as well as shorter one off comics about everything from popcorn to the coronavirus. I would not be surprised to one day see these comics for sale at Snowbound Books. Matthew, I want to thank you sincerely for your time and your ability and using those things to bring creative and amusing ideas into this world. Marquette and the creative community that exists here is a better place thanks to young artists like you. Congratulations on this award. You have truly earned it.
and was a founder and board president of the Superior Arts Youth Theater. When the COVID pandemic brought on significant challenges to performing artists and musical, musical organizations, Dr. Grugan was instrumental in establishing protocols and procedures for local performing ensembles. The Market City Band's highly successful 2020 summer concert season was featured in an article published in the Association of Concert Bands Journal and became a model for other community bands throughout the U.S. Dr. Grugan was subsequently asked to be a presenter in a national conference via Zoom on the topic of performing live concerts during a pandemic, thinking outside the stage. He was also highly involved in producing the Market Symphony Orchestra's video collage productions in 2020 and 21, and helped establish the streaming capabilities for his community and university ensembles that enabled them to greatly extend their outreach to thousands of audience members on a global level. He is married to Betsy Grugan, who is the band director at Aspen Ridge Middle School and personnel manager of the Market Symphony Orchestra. Their three children, Elizabeth, Mallory, and Kayla, are also active in various musical organizations in the community and region. In his leisure time, Dr. Grugan enjoys skiing, hiking, kayaking, and camping. And if you could have seen the pictures, he's also a juggler and a unicyclist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage our Lifetime Achievement recipient this year, Dr. Stephen Gruber. Well, thank you very much, Rusty. It's good to see all of you. I'll have to admit that when I was first informed about receiving this award, one of my first thoughts was, am I actually old enough to get this award? <laughs> And although I don't really look like I'm in my 80s, <laughs> my good friend Ben Bonesback tells me that soon people are going to be coming up to me saying things like, you're looking good. <laughs> I'm glad you're getting around OK. Anyway, I'm deeply, deeply honored to be given the Lifetime Achievement Award from the City of Marquette Arts and Culture Center. It's been a pleasure working in this special community during the last 24 years, and I feel blessed to have had the opportunity to be involved with so many different arts organizations during this time. Um, when I first moved to Marquette in 1997 to take a job as Northern Michigan University's Director of Bands and Professor of Low Brass, I had no idea of the extracurricular opportunities that laid ahead for me living in this unique community in the middle of a beautiful natural wilderness. Along the way, I've received a huge amount of satisfaction and pleasure from participating in many various community and arts organizations. Please allow me to share some of the experiences I've had with these organizations in Marquette because I'm proud of what these organizations have been able to do and the people involved with them. I want to thank uh, the Marquette Symphony Orchestra and mention that during my time here, uh, we did develop the holiday concerts. Um, it was an MC, uh, uh, an event MC by local celebrities. Uh, we worked on the pay scale for musicians. We've held children's concerts in the schools. We've held chamber music concerts, other performances like with the, the Summer Strings and the uh, MS of Brass Quintet. We hosted our first scene with a symphony competition. We hired a new conductor who helped us broaden our types of musical offerings to reach new audience members. And as Rusty said, during the COVID pandemic, we produced music video collage concerts or uh, collages and held outdoor concerts. I was really surprised and, and just really touched by the youth theater performance. And uh, I, I think that's wonderful. And I'm really proud of, of what that group has become. Starting out as the Marquette and Arts, Arts and Culture Center Youth Theater Program and then sort of transitioned through the Lake Superior Theater and now the Superior Arts Youth Theater. Um, I think it's just a great uh, opportunity that the kids have in Marquette and I think it's wonderful what they've been able to do and continue to do. I'm looking forward to seeing everything that happens with that group in the future. With the Westerly Winds Big Band, they call me the music director, but I don't pay a lot of attention to that. And, uh, Besides playing at parties and dances, there have been some public concerts in Nagani and Crystal Falls and Iron Mountain, Curtis and Manistique. 
Of course, the swing dances at the Ordock Brewing Company have become very popular. Have any of you been to those swing dances at the Ordock Brewery? By the way, the next one is coming up on Halloween, which is Sunday, October 31st from 2 to 4 p.m. But we'll plug in for that. I really thought it was interesting when I, people would walk up to me and they would ask me more about tubas than anything else. And we had the tuba Christmas event along with the Ach Tuba Fest and the Superior Sackbutt's Trombone Quartet. And the Sackbutt, that's the Renaissance name for the trombone. I'm really proud of that one. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of amazing that the tubas can draw a crowd. What's up with that, really? <laughs> you know, everywhere tubas are, you can see a big and enthusiastic audience. And, so we've had some uh, memorable performances with those groups. Um, the Sister Cities organization is a, also a great uh, thing that happens in Marquette. And uh, I'm really happy that my daughter Elizabeth and I were able to be delegates. I think it was in 2010. And uh, I was, uh, while I was there, I just had to, to go into a couple of the high schools and work with the bands and, and maybe teach a, a trombone lesson or two. That was fun for me. But. Um, Finally, I want to talk about the Marquette City Band. Um, there's, there have been quite a, quite a few developments with that that uh, I think have uh, benefited the city. Um, we've, we've changed the summer concert series from one concert to roughly, now roughly every two weeks, um, and which really provides us the opportunity for better performances and greater audience attendance. We took the band on a five city uh, concert tour to Finland, and you've heard a lot about this. We put, presented now uh, winter and spring concerts uh, in Kaufman Auditorium. I apologize my information is more factual than poetic. I have a tough, uh, tough act to follow with all the poets in there. <laughs> but um, one of the great things too with the city band over the summer, one of the maybe a few good things that has come out you know, during the pandemic, and there's been mention of how important the arts have been during the pandemic, is through our streaming, our live streaming of our concerts, we've, we've no, noted that we've had people really from all over the globe uh, watching our concerts. Um, from both sister cities, Kayani, Finland, and Higashiyomi, Japan. We've had people from Canada watching. I remember uh, Melissa and somebody from England was watching our last concert. And so this has been uh, one of the things that we've done. Uh, also enjoyed, enjoyed collaborating uh, with Pine Mountain Music Festival. Uh, this summer. I, I have to say that one of the best things that's happened to me over the years has been when someone comes up and says, I haven't played my instrument in 30 years. Do you think it would be possible for me to relearn how to play it and maybe play in Market City Band? Well, my answer has always been, of course. My good friend P. David Allen is one such person. And in his case, he didn't just get back into trombone playing, but he did so in a big way. Not only playing in the city band, but also becoming the bass trombonist of the Market Symphony, the principal trombonist of the Cubano Symphony. And been performing at about every other ensemble I've been associated with. And I really feel like as a music educator, one of our main goals is to help nurture a lifelong interest in music and the arts. Um, that's one of the things that I'm proudest about working in Marquette is having helped several community members rekindle an interest in playing their instruments and enjoying the participation in the Marquette City Band and also other ensembles. We do have an incredible group of community musicians in Marquette. The way they all work together is truly amazing. I want to thank all of them for allowing me to lead and perform with them in all the different capacities. It's been a pro privilege and a pleasure. Um, I'm sorry that you didn't get to see all the pictures. They were, uh, some of them comical, some of them uh, entertaining. Speaking of that word entertaining, uh, from time to time I've tried to figure out really what I am all about. Tina asked us to talk about, you know, kind of what makes us who we are. And I've, from, I've searched sometimes to figure out, well, am I a teacher, am I a trauma player, am I a conductor, am I, uh, you know, just, just whatever. Um, but I think a musician is probably the thing that I latch on to a lot, although entertainer is also one. Um, you didn't get to see, you know, me riding a unicycle doing a, a handstand, dressing up as a clown, and tap dancing when I was five years old. But my former student, 
Leah Ellenboss figured it out before I did. I, I heard, overheard her talking to me about uh, to another person, and it, or it might have been on Facebook actually. Anyway, she said uh, her her way of describing me is is Dr. Guggen is, is foremost an entertainer, and she's probably right about that. And I've been just blessed in my life to perform, um, you know, with jazz musicians. Uh, Musicians from the Tonight Show band, uh, Wayne Newton, believe it or not, yeah, and, the, and the backer groups for them. And I've realized the importance that these experiences have, have had in shaping my uh, maybe natural inclination as, a, as an entertainer. I, I'm also grateful for all the teacher uh, and mentors that I've had. Most recently, my high school band director just within the last month passed away, and I went back down to my hometown, Frankfort, Kentucky, and attended his funeral. And, just realized how, and, and again, important the, the teachers are to us. And that led, led all the way up to James Croft, who was uh, my uh, major professor at Florida State, and uh, he ended up uh, not only being my major professor, but best man in my wedding. And speaking of my wife, Betsy, those of us, uh, those of you who know us, uh, know that we're definitely a team, and we really work together on most of our musical adventures. We help each other all the time, and I was thinking about it last night. We actually got together in the first place because while we were students in Florida State, at the end of the 1989 spring semester, I asked her to help me file some music in the band library. Now, does that sound romantic or what? <laughs> but I mean this most sincerely, though. I would, wouldn't get to do everything, and things just wouldn't be the same without Betsy. For us, our lives intertwined with teaching and involvement in the arts has worked perfectly, almost. Never a dull moment, that's for sure. And I also want to thank our wonderful kids, Elizabeth, Mallory, and Kayla, who are all here, for inspiring a lot of what we do and also sharing their talents with the community over the years. I love all of you. So in conclusion, I want to thank the Market Arts and Culture Center for presenting this award to me. I'm incredibly humbled to be recognized in this way by people who I consider to be my peers and my colleagues. I've thoroughly enjoyed being a participant and promoter of the arts in Marquette and working alongside all the talented and enthusiastic people in our community. Hopefully we can continue to make a difference for the people in Marquette and I look forward to enjoying many more future artistic endeavors together. Thank you all and remember, Involvement in the arts keeps us young. And ladies and gentlemen, we have one more surprise for Dr. Grugan. The Pride of the North, the Northern Michigan University Wildcat Marching Band. in a short amount of time. This band is like three three weeks old. <laughs> so I think they're doing great.